After more than half an hour of busy work, Hayden almost didn't pause at all and continued to give people treatment. In the end, the mystical energy in his body had been exhausted. Fortunately, at this time, the poisoned residents in the community had all been treated, and the rest stayed at home with their doors and windows closed. The staff of the hospital happily talked about Hayden's miraculous medical technique just now and left. However, the police frowned and wanted an interview with Hayden. The bunch of them respectfully urged him into the police car. An elderly policeman looked at him meaningfully and said, Mr. Hayden, your performance just now was really amazing, but we have something more serious to talk about. Does today's matter have anything to do with you? Hayden frowned and responded, Do you mean to say that I poisoned the residents of the community myself and then worked my head off to treat them? The policeman grinned. I didn't mean that. I meant do you know the inside story? After all, now I have reason to suspect that the community was poisoned precisely because you bought the property. Hayden was naturally aware of this matter, but he did not admit it face to face. Because he felt that if he confessed that he had some knowledge of this incident, the police would definitely say next that he would be very detrimental to their investigation of the incident. And just like that, they would expect him to participate in their investigation process, which was something he had absolutely no time for. There was too much on his plate. He had to take care of the clinic and treat his patients, take down the Lovelace family and keep Zelda and Erica safe, acquire all the real estate in the community safely, and finally, also focus on cultivating his skills to ascend to the next level. Because the impact of today's incident is too great, and it almost killed people, we have come to a decision. The acquisition of real estate in the neighborhood needs to be temporarily suspended. When the mastermind of this matter is investigated and the truth is revealed, your project can continue to advance. The male policeman was firm when he spoke. Hayden sighed inwardly, knowing that any argument at this time would be futile and might even bring him more trouble. So he nodded immediately. I have no objection to this, but you said just now that as long as you can investigate who the poisoners are or catch them with your own hands, the real estate acquisition can continue, right? The policeman frowned and glanced at Hayden. That's true, but I want to remind you, don't act excessively for any commercial gain. It is our responsibility to investigate the truth of the matter and punish the criminals. Don't overstretch your hand so as not to cause trouble for yourself. I'm sure you must have confidence in our ability. Let us handle this. Hayden didn't hear what the police said next. After answering a few questions casually, he got out of the car and walked directly to Erica, Greg, and others who were looking forward to his arrival. What's the matter? Are we not allowed to continue the acquisition? Erica asked with worry. Since she was fairly experienced in business, and seeing that Hayden's face at this time was very disappointed, she immediately made her own guess. Hayden shrugged his shoulders and recounted the news and situation. Erica was a little disappointed, but she still grabbed Hayden's arm and said comfortingly, It's okay. Let us just take a big, much-needed rest today. And the residents must have panicked after experiencing this incident. So we also need to give them time to recuperate. We need them to have faith in us again, and for that... We need to be sensitive. Greg gritted his teeth and cursed beside her. These guys are going too far. Just to compete with my Mr. Hayden for the land? I can't believe they actually dared to poison the entire community. What heartless bastards. I don't even know when they did it. Surely my guys would have noticed something. Hayden looked around and then said, According to my judgment, it should be near dawn that the gas was released and this kind of toxin can't stay in the air for too long. And I'm sure, in order to continue to delay the time, they will definitely do something else in the future. Then I'll let my people keep an eye on the community, and if anyone even smells anything fishy anymore, I'll make sure my guys catch them on the spot. Greg immediately patted his chest and assured Hayden, Hayden decided that there was no point sticking around here, so he bid Erica and Greg goodbye and drove off to his clinic. Erica was busy preparing for the establishment of their company, 
so she went to contact her former colleagues and old classmates. Hayden reached the clinic in no time. As usual, many people were already waiting in line. To Hayden's surprise, the rich young lady who only caused problems earlier was there managing the crowd with an enthusiastic face. After Juliet saw Hayden, she immediately came over to say hello with a playful smile. And this time, Brittany was happily savoring more than a dozen breakfasts on the table. Of course, this was all prepared by Juliet's chef. Seeing Juliet, Hayden instantly got a headache, so he simply pretended not to see her and went into the clinic on his own. Squinting his eyes, he said to Brittany, Have you finished eating? Hurry up and bring the poor patients in. They came to see the doctor, not the rich young ladies of leisure. Brittany immediately put down her plate with a smile, wiped her mouth, and began to warmly greet the patients. Unlike yesterday, Juliet did not slack off, but moved a chair and sat beside Hayden excitedly, carefully observing his every movement and step with keen eyes. Hayden didn't bother to speak to her and treated people one by one, but soon he discovered a very interesting phenomenon. Although Juliet was a rich girl with a tricky and willful temper, she did possess a reasonably high understanding of medicine. When he treated people one after another, she would always ask some very unique questions about their illnesses and also provide some interesting insights. These problems were beyond the reach of even Brittany, who had learned some basic medicine skills from a young age because her grandfather had taught her. Hayden began to test Juliet and asked her to explain some more complex medical phenomena. Unexpectedly, he discovered that she not only learned at a strange speed, but could even draw inferences about other cases from one instance. Hayden could now actually believe that she had a sharp mind. Are you really wanting to learn from me? Or is this just a three-minute spurt of enthusiasm or a moment of curiosity? Hayden raised his eyebrows and looked at Juliet. The latter said solemnly, in fact, I have changed many schools and learned a lot since I was a child. But in the end, I have achieved nothing. The elders in the family felt that I had no goals, and I was almost about to accept this fate. But your outstanding performance at the party really motivated me to focus and learn from you. If you are willing to teach me, I want to learn from you, and I will never give up until I am finished. Hayden was quite skeptical about this. But he didn't continue to sneer, just nodded casually, and then continued to see patients. Throughout the whole day, Juliet was almost inseparable from him and did not argue about the regular things like coffee or takeaway lunch. Instead, it was Brittany who brought a lot of exquisite food, drinks, and snacks from the bodyguards of the Slighton family and had a great time. Hayden had been thinking about the poisoning in the community, but it was a pity that even after half a day, Greg's place was always calm, and no one was caught. Hayden understood that even if someone wanted to poison the community, it was absolutely impossible to be this blatant, and naturally they would not take such risks during the day, so it seemed like he had no option but to wait until night. When the evening was approaching, Hayden politely rejected Juliet's offer to ask him to dinner, got in the car directly, and then called Erica. Erica was still preparing for the establishment of their legally registered company's affairs, and she had mentioned an hour ago that she was choosing an office address. This time, when she answered the phone, Erica was sounding a little tired. She said to Hayden, Are you done with the clinic's business for the day? That's right. Where are you? I'll pick you up. Hayden responded calmly. Erica responded feebly, Your timing is perfect. I have run into some trouble here, and I need you, Hayden. Hayden naturally didn't dare to neglect his wife's request. Of course, love. I'll be there. Just send me your location. Without asking what the trouble was, after learning the address, he stepped on the accelerator and drove all the way. After arriving at the place, Hayden couldn't help showing a strange look on his face. It never occurred to him that Erica who had always been upright and prideful, would talk about starting a company and recruiting others to help her at a high-end sauna of all places. Although the nameplate said something about steaming and beautifying, in Hayden's mind, this place was just one where people could take luxurious baths, but the place just looked much more upscale than a bathhouse. 
I don't know what's been going on recently. I just went to the skeevy club yesterday, and now I'm going to a weird steam and sauna today. Why does Wyvern City have such weird establishments? Hayden rubbed his nose and got out of the car. Another thing had instantly worried him, which was that he was all right with going to a sketchy club with Greg and his minion, but he was absolutely not comfortable with meeting his wife at an upscale sauna. Not because he doubted Erica. In fact, if she ever wanted to go to the spa for a couple's massage or something, he would surely be delighted. But if she was here solely for networking, he couldn't even imagine the number of lecherous gazes his gorgeous wife would innocently invite. Just the thought of it made him frown unhappily. When he came to the entrance hall, he was stopped when he wanted to go in. The two young girls at the door with pleasant smiles on their faces told Hayden very politely and tactfully that this place was for ladies only and male guests were not accepted. Hayden finally got some comfort in his heart and heaved a sigh of relief. He smacked himself forever doubting Erica. She was a smart woman and she would know better. Then he took a few steps back and took out his phone to contact Erica. A minute later, a woman who looked like a supervisor walked out quickly in a well-fitting suit. First, she sized Hayden up and then asked softly, Are you Mr. Hayden? Hayden nodded. The latter then hurried down the steps, pointed to the side and said, Your companion has been waiting for a long time. The main entrance is not open to men, so please come with me. Hayden began to feel awkward again, but for the sake of Erica, he could only suppress the unhappiness in his heart and followed the slender female executive all the way forward. After entering a certain door, he noticed an explosion of floral aroma and the humid air mixed in with a variety of spices and herbs. However, Hayden's eyebrows became more and more wrinkled, as if he was worried about the air quality here and the smell of those fragrant herbs. Please come this way, Mr. Hayden. The female supervisor urged him as she kept walking forward without looking back. They passed the stairs to the top floor, and he noticed that the smell of the unique spices in the air here had weakened a bit. The female supervisor stood in front of a specific wooden door and knocked lightly twice, and then a lazy voice came from inside. Come in. Next, the door was opened. Hayden looked up and took a glance inside. But in the next second, his face turned red, and he quickly turned his face to the side. Inside the room was a lively and bold scene, because four or five women were soaking in the steamy pool, with only white towels around their bodies. Two of them were standing there giggling and chatting beside the pool. After noticing that a man had appeared at the door, they retreated into the pool in a hurry. Then someone complained, Erica, why would you catch me by surprise like this? You knew your husband was coming and you didn't even inform me? Hearing such a remark, Hayden blushed even more, became increasingly uncomfortable, and simply turned his back. He had been vaguely aware of Erica's existence just now. As for the two other women, he had no sense of who they were, and he was not about to turn around and ask. He had noticed that compared with Erica, the woman who spoke was slightly older, but her skin and figure seemed to be well-maintained. She was the kind of stunner who was suitable for all ages, and men would linger and drool after her despite any situation. Okay, stop kidding around now. Didn't you just say that you doubted my Hayden's abilities? So why don't you hurry up and cover up? I'll let him in to prove to you how gifted he is. Now it was Erica who was speaking. The tone of her voice also seemed a little uncomfortable, obviously a little sour. There's nothing to hide. Your man has already seen all of me just now. Could it be that you are jealous? Or are you afraid that the rest of us vixens will eat up that adorable little Hayden you speak so fondly of? A woman with a slightly magnetic voice full of infinite temptation teased. Hayden was embarrassed beyond belief and was already planning to turn around and leave. But exactly at this time, Erica finally shouted again, Hayden, please go to the side and get out of your clothes and come into the hot tub. 
Hayden's eyes widened with horror as he glanced at Erica pleadingly and asked, What? Why? Do I really have to? Please, Hayden, she pouted like a child. I have something to prove, and I can't do it without you. Hayden had no choice but to follow the female supervisor to the next dressing room with a blazing face. There were all kinds of sexy women's clothing hanging on the shelves in the dressing room, which made him feel even more awkward. Why was his wife torturing him like this? The female supervisor unbuttoned Hayden's shirt as soon as he came up. Her movements were skillful, and there was no shy expression on her face. Hayden was so frightened that he quickly jumped back and refused, then abruptly asked the female supervisor to leave him alone. Only then did he heave a sigh of relief. After taking off his shirt and trousers, he casually took a bathrobe from the cabinet next to him and put it on. A few minutes later, Hayden returned to the door of the separate hot tub room. The four women, including Erica, had gotten out of the hot tub and were also wrapped in bathrobes and sat on wicker chairs, drinking tea and chatting. Ladies, this is my husband, Hayden Channing. Erica immediately stood up and introduced Hayden to everyone. Hayden forced himself to show a calm expression on his face at this time, although his mind was buzzing and he wanted to flee the awkward scene immediately. The other three women present all focused their eyes on Hayden's body and kept sizing up his face, which still made him extremely uncomfortable. Mr. Hayden, I heard that you have excellent medical skills. Your wife says there is no disease in the world that you cannot cure. I wonder if it is true. A woman who seemed to be in her early thirties held a teacup in her hand and looked at it with interest. Hayden only nodded in response. According to Erica's introduction, this woman's name was Fallon Harvey, and this spa and sauna were her property. She was the one who had made him blush and run away earlier. Hayden pretended to be calm and responded, It's true that I have a little knowledge of medicine, but it's not as exaggerated as Erica said. So far, Hayden had not had the opportunity to communicate with Erica alone, so he naturally didn't know what the trouble she was talking about on the phone was. However, judging from the current chat topic, he guessed that it should be related to medical treatment. So thinking of this, Hayden became more relaxed and calm. After all, he really has no pressure in this respect. You may not know why I called you here, Fallon said after she elegantly picked up the teacup and took a sip. Then she crossed her legs gracefully, not bothering about the presence of a man in her state of undress. Immediately afterwards, she added, Erica wanted to start a company, but she wanted to poach some of my staff because of insufficient manpower. I was very angry at first. However, for the sake of our acquaintance, I said that as long as she can find a way to solve my personal problems and troubles for me, I will let her have some of my best workers, and she will have corresponding benefits. Fallon's words were vague, but Hayden had already guessed what she wanted. Then he took the initiative to answer, If I'm not mistaken, the trouble that you have encountered is related to this bath. I mean the spa, right? If that's the case, I can really tell you a thing or two. As soon as Hayden's words left his lips, Fallon immediately exchanged glances with the other two women. Then she frowned and asked Erica, You, girl... Did you inform your man about everything in advance? I remember when you met with us before, but you never mentioned this guy at all. Why are you being so cooperative today? Have you lovers made up? Erica coughed twice in embarrassment and looked at Hayden with some guilt. After finding that the other party's face didn't change significantly, and he wasn't angry, she calmed down and explained, Fallon, don't talk nonsense. I just told Hayden to come here to help you because I know he can get the job done. Besides, you were by my side when I called just now, and you heard our conversation very clearly. I didn't mention a thing to him, and I even kept my mobile phone on the table and on speakerphone, so how could I have gotten a chance to tip off the news? Fallon narrowed her eyes in amusement and suspicion, and then said, That just means you are too smart a man. You can guess the problem just by looking at me. Now I'm really interested in him. Her tone was full of ridicule, even teasing, but it was not malicious. The other two women chuckled out of amusement, 
and Erica kept silent as she looked at Hayden expectantly. Hayden didn't dare to talk at all. He was just thinking about what he had encountered along the way just now. Why was he the one always stuck in such weird situations? What shocked him even more was that it was the smart and sensible Erica who had pulled him into this mess. He would have expected something so stupid and childish from Melanie or Juliet, but never from his elegant and sophisticated wife. Okay, let's stop joking. Aren't you quite anxious about the problem you told me about before? Why don't you tell Hayden the details? If I succeed, you can't go back on your word. Now my company is in the process of preparation, and what I lack the most is talent. You've got many here, and I want some of them. When Erica spoke, she looked at the handsome woman next to her, who was her elegant senior. Ever since Hayden came in, the woman had always looked cold, tightly wrapped in a bath towel, as if she was afraid of being taken advantage of. This made him roll his eyes because she was obviously putting on an act since she was very forward with him earlier. He was irritated that Erica was associating with such strange people, but also realized she had her reasons and was doing all this for the benefit of their upcoming company. That's all good, but I really want to know, how did Mr. Hayden sense that there is something wrong with my steam room? Fallon looked at Hayden provocatively again. Hayden kept his eyes open, looked into Fallon's eyes and responded, Your guests should be hypoxic and unconscious from time to time, right? And the guests who come here often, especially those who stay here for more than two hours at a time, will feel a tightness in their chest, shortness of breath, and even a faint tingling in the head. Isn't that so? Hayden said in a calm tone, as if it was a common thing. Fallon's sharp eyes widened as she listened, until she finally straightened up, opened her mouth to speak, and stared at Hayden closely. After she took a pause, she said, Are you a fairy? Or have the two of you already made up your mind and figured out the details of this place in advance? Hayden smiled lightly. If you have such doubts, then I think there is no need to seek out my consultation. Erica, it's getting late, we should go back home. After finishing speaking, Hayden really made a gesture of getting up and leaving. Erica had a tacit understanding with him, and she also wanted to get up. She knew that playing hardball always worked. Fallon hurriedly stopped them both. Don't leave, guys. I was just joking just now. Erica knows that I don't like rules and regulations. Don't take it to heart, Mr. Hayden. I was just messing with you. Fallon was a businesswoman, so she naturally had some vision and insight. Although she felt that Hayden's actions just now were a bit unbelievable, she could also see the confidence and calmness in his eyes that ordinary people did not possess at all. Coupled with the recommendation of her close friend Erica, Fallon really looked at Hayden with admiration at this time. Immediately afterwards, she said, What you just said is correct. It has been almost a month since this problem happened, and my steam room, which was originally a prosperous business, almost closed down because we needed to renovate and fix things. It took a lot of money and energy to finally suppress the negative publicity, but the problem has not been resolved. Except for those real old customers, almost no one comes back. Fallon finally revealed a trace of weakness and worry. In this commercial district where every inch of land was frightfully expensive, with a storefront of such a large area with five floors, the daily expenses were astronomical if the business was not making any money. Hayden didn't hesitate at the moment and responded slowly. Since we are all friends, then I will continue to say a few more words. I am a medical master in the making, and I have certain opinions that you may or may not agree with. But I'll tell you anyway. The first thing is that immediately after entering through the door, I found that there was a problem with the air here. Before Hayden finished speaking, Fallon immediately asked, Right? Me too. In the beginning, the experts I found also suspected that it was an air problem, so I especially spent a lot of money to rechange the exhaust and ventilation system, and it has been measured with a special instrument, but apparently, there is nothing wrong with it at all. Hayden said with a smile. 
It's indeed a problem with the air, but it's not because of lack of circulation. It's not about the ventilation, but more about the perfumes that you're infusing into the air. It's because of the mixture of a large number of herbs and fragrances in the air and the special substances in the hot spring water. I'm guessing your herb and spice blend caters to people because it smells good, but you have no idea about its medicinal composition. These herbs are very strong and have certain properties that can induce nausea, so it is easy to cause illness. The few women in front of him were completely confused by Hayden's obscure statement. Staring wide-eyed as if listening to a book from heaven, they didn't understand him at all. After a while, one of the women who had been cold and silent spoke up. You mean, the environment here is picky? Some people will be fine if they come and stay for a long time, but some people will definitely get sick if they soak in the baths too long? I find that hard to believe. Erica, is your husband a doctor or a wannabe magician? When faced with such merciless ridicule and accusations, Hayden was momentarily speechless. Fallon and the others couldn't help giggling. Erica was the only one who had an upset expression on her face. Hayden rubbed his nose, looked at the woman with a delicate face and a cold demeanor opposite, and then said, Although I am not a magician, you understood my statement correctly. The human body is a very mysterious subject, and it has a very strange relationship with the several chemicals and compounds that make up the cosmos. If you don't believe me, I can't help it. However, I bet that one of the four of you here has a specially sensitive constitution. It may be fine to stay in this room, but as long as you stay below the third floor, you will get sick on the spot in less than half an hour, and it will get worse by the second. Isn't that right? he asked challengingly. Hayden was provoked and questioned on the spot. Although there was no anger on his face, there was already some indignation in his tone. Erica took a big gulp because she could see that the atmosphere in the room was rapidly changing. She didn't blame her husband for being irritated by her posh and arrogant friends. He was very different from them and believed in delivering results rather than just talking. She looked at him from the side, hoping and praying that he would not lose his cool and emerge victorious out of this situation, as always. The arrogant woman on the opposite side frowned. I don't like to beat around the bush. You say one of the four of us has a specially sensitive system. Why don't you point out this person directly? I want to see today. Are you really as good as Erica said? The woman had issued an open challenge which instantly made Erica alert. Hayden straightened his back and had an icy look on his face. The temperature in the steaming room seemed to drop several degrees. Hayden was a little embarrassed for the foolish woman at this time because soon she would be eating her own words of ridicule. Other than that, he was also a little annoyed. The woman named Serenity Kemper, who was sitting across from them, would be fine if she didn't speak. But now that she had spoken with stupid confidence, she would simply hate herself moments later. Hayden really didn't bother giving her any face. But now, in order to let Erica save her face, Hayden could only continue to suppress the anger in his heart and prove his worth yet again to a bunch of inconsequential people. Alas, these were things one had to do for love. Then he responded calmly, Since you are so interested, then I'll be straightforward and reveal the truth. Among the four ladies here, your physique is the most sensitive and prone to danger in this establishment, especially if you're in one of the lower floors. Originally, Hayden meant what he said in a medical capacity and had no other meaning. However, in a room full of women, such subjects were sensitive and likely to be taken out of context. Fallon especially laughed and teased. Did you hear that, Serenity? Erica's husband said you were too sensitive. Are you really that sensitive? No wonder you don't let any man even get close to you. Erica's eyes went wide at the harsh comment, and Hayden looked sideways since his words had been totally blown out of context. Serenity gritted her teeth immediately after listening and gave Hayden a fierce look. She obviously felt that Hayden was deliberately retaliating against her, so he said something so private in front of several of her girlfriends. She immediately stood up and said with a cold face, Mr. Hayden, I believe what you said for now, but if you can't prove it in a while, how can you pay for your ignorance and recklessness? Hayden was not to be outdone, 
and responded to the other party's challenging gaze with his own retort. Go to the second floor now, find an indoor steam room, and stay there. If you don't feel dizzy or have a stabbing pain in your chest within half an hour, then I've lost. I promise to do whatever you want. Serenity spat back with a little bite to her tone. Seeing Hayden and Serenity confronting each other, guns blazing, Fallon, who was also suspicious of Hayden, immediately clapped her hands. Okay, I love to watch people bet. How about this? If either of you wins, you have to give the other party whatever they want, and you can't refuse no matter what. And I also mixed in my own agenda here. If Mr. Hayden can really find and solve the problem of my spa through this bet, I will not only agree to release him, but also give him an additional benefit. When Fallon spoke, her tone was unavoidable, provocative, even nakedly seductive. Hayden tried his best to pretend like he did not hear anything about it. But Erica couldn't wait to stand up and support her husband. Seduction won't work on him, Fallon. No problem. Let's settle this. Although we are best friends, we must follow the rules. No matter who wins or loses, we must not regret anything. Serenity hesitated for a second, gave Hayden a cold look, and then agreed. Hayden was warmed by his wife's support, so he took the opportunity to hold Erica's hand and said with a smile, I'll make you proud, love. I promise. Erica's face flushed instantly, which irritated the other three women in the room. So Fallon quickly intervened and said, Erica, although I also hope that your man can really solve the steam room problem for me, but compared to this, I hope he can lose. In this way, I can do whatever I want with him, and you can only watch from the sidelines and cannot stop me. All the people present were adults, so they could naturally hear the ambiguous threat in her words. Hayden's face turned red with embarrassment and annoyance, but Erica's face turned pale with horror. Although she didn't refute anything and didn't tell Hayden anything, she looked at him clearly with a hint of a threat, as if telling Hayden, if you mess things up today, I'll show you who's boss. Hayden resisted the urge to roll his eyes at the insipid women his wife was friends with. Instead, he faced Erica's eyes proudly and responded with a confident smile, without any nervousness or panic. Serenity, surrounded by Fallon, Erica, and the third friend, went downstairs through the stairs. After all, Hayden said just now that among the four women, only Serenity was sensitive and special. In order to verify the truth of what he said to the greatest extent, the four of them naturally had to go to the steam room on the second floor together. Hayden, on the other hand, leaned leisurely on the rattan chair, drinking some expensive tea. He was not at all worried about the situation downstairs. At this time, he was a little puzzled. What kind of talent did this serenity have that Erica insisted on chasing after her? With such a cold personality and attitude, even if they worked together in the future, it would be uncomfortable, right? Hayden was contemplating at leisure, and the time passed quite quickly. According to his estimation, it hadn't been more than half an hour before he suddenly heard a rush of footsteps coming from outside. Someone yelled, She's dizzy! Oh my gosh, Mr. Hayden really made the right guess. Hayden couldn't tell whether it was anxiety or excitement in the woman's voice. When Hayden turned his face away, he happened to see the face of the tall female supervisor who opened the door and came in panting and red. Then, without waiting for Hayden to ask, she said again, Miss Serenity fainted and said she was experiencing a tightness and tingling pain in his chest. No one knows what to do now, Mr. Hayden. Please hurry over and have a look. Hayden showed an imperceptible smile on his face. He had already expected such a situation. However, anyone who took a look at him now could see that his physical health was good and that he was also mentally rejuvenated. What's more, after taking a nice steam, he had more than sufficient confidence in himself. At this time, he stood up and followed the female supervisor unhurriedly and got downstairs through the special passage in the building. 
In another steam room of the same size, Fallon, Erica, and the third friend looked anxious. On the massage bed next to him lay Serenity, who was pale and suffering, and was about to lose consciousness. The minute Hayden made his entry, all the women turned to glance at him. Mr. Hayden, you really hit the spot. In less than half an hour, Serenity couldn't take it anymore and nearly passed out. You are amazing. Fallon ran over to pull Hayden to the spot with bright eyes. Hayden's heart fell to his stomach and he tried to keep his distance from the woman. Then, he came to the side of the massage table. This situation is more serious than I imagined. Why didn't you call me before she passed out? Hayden frowned and asked with a serious expression on his face. Fallon twitched her lips and said, Serenity has always been very strong. In fact, after staying here for less than a quarter of an hour, she already reacted badly to the steam and looked very uncomfortable. But in order not to lose to you, she had been gritting my teeth and holding on. This is much more serious than the situation of other customers. Erica chimed in and said, Hayden, please hurry up and think of a way to cure her. Hayden sighed. Why did she go so far for a stupid bet? Originally, if the symptoms were only mild, simply going to a well-ventilated place would make her recover. But she took things too far because she wanted to win. The symptoms are so severe now, I'm afraid I need to detoxify her whole body. Erica gasped with worry and asked, What do we do now? How can we help? Take off her bathrobe. I have to administer some emergency treatment immediately, Hayden instructed, much to the women's shock. Excuse me? Erica gasped, immediately frowning at her husband. Hayden's heart was in an instant panic, because although he was of an extraordinary lineage, he was still a slave to his wife's temper. Erica, please! I'm a doctor, for God's sake! Are you saying that all the other doctors who disrobe their patients for the sake of treatment are all creeps? Please be reasonable, he explained with a twitching mouth and red face. Seeing his embarrassed expression, Erica instantly regretted ever doubting her husband, so she supportively squeezed his shoulders and said, All right, I'm sorry. It was just my instinctive response. Now please save my friend. Serenity, who was in a semi-comatose state, had heard that Hayden was going to detoxify her whole body, and so she had to take off her clothes and was instantly in the mood to protest firmly against it. She immediately forced herself to open her eyes, gave Hayden a hard look, and then said, No way. If that's the case, I don't want you to treat me. Send me to a hospital now. With their advanced level of medical care, I am sure that I can be rescued. I will not allow this man to take advantage of me. At this moment, Serenity's speech had been a little intermittent, and she looked like she was going to pass out for good. Do you think I'm really so hungry for you? Stop kidding yourself, Serenity. I have had enough of your act. Maybe your dumb tricks work on other men, but I don't want to waste another precious minute talking to you. Hayden immediately snapped, finally losing his cool. I have a gorgeous wife that I love so I have no need to seek out any other women. Besides, I am particularly turned off by idiotic women like you, so please be rest assured that your body will be safe and intact. I have zero interest in you. I don't expect you to respect me, because you would need half a brain to do that, but don't you dare act like a victim here. Now if you don't want me to help you, I'll gladly leave. The ambulance will take time by when I don't know if you'll even be conscious. So good luck, I guess. His voice suddenly became cold as he stood up to leave in anger. Erica coughed dryly twice and quietly looked at Hayden, with a little relief and pride in her eyes. Then she pulled him down beside her, begging him to stay with her sweet eyes. Fallon and the other person next to him hurriedly persuaded, Serenity, this is not the time to throw tantrums. Hayden is a doctor. How can he take advantage of you by treating your illness? If it were me, I would be so happy. 
Serenity's face became even uglier when she heard such words, and she gritted her teeth and insisted she goes to the hospital, which made Hayden blow his fuse. He only snorted. Then hurry up. Remember to find the best hospital, find the best specialist, and use the best medicine. And the lung-clearing procedure must be started within ten minutes, otherwise the chest tightness, shortness of breath, and tingling pain will be your best friend for a lifetime. After speaking, Hayden turned around and walked out. Erica and others hurriedly stopped him. At this time, Serenity's symptoms on the massage bed became more and more extreme. Just like what Hayden said, her chest seemed to be pierced continuously by thousands of steel needles. Finally, unable to bear the pain and the panic, she gritted his teeth, blushed, and said, I agree to let you cure me. After half an hour, the closed door of the private room was opened. Hayden walked out expressionlessly and wiped the sweat from his forehead. Fallon, Erica, and the third woman, who were anxiously waiting at the door, came over and asked, How is she? The toxins on the body have been removed, and the symptoms have been completely eliminated. Hayden responded casually as if everything was normal and under control. Why isn't she waking up? I think her eyes are still closed. Fallon was a little surprised and walked into the room first. Then she found that Serenity's face was flushed and her whole body was red. Apparently, Hayden massaged her with a special technique which caused a layer of sweat to cover the surface of her body. Even in her state of semi-consciousness, she was stretching out her hand to tightly grasp the bath towel covering her body. Although her eyes were closed, she had obviously regained consciousness, but because of her extreme embarrassment and depression, when she opened her eyes to face Hayden and his girlfriends, she immediately wanted to hide her face. Okay, who told you to be competitive with Hayden? Did you feel good during the massage just now? Fallon teased beside her. Serenity was about to collapse once again, but gritted her teeth and said, I admit defeat. Now can someone please bring me my clothes? I want to go home. Hayden accompanied Fallon, Erica, and others back to the office on the top floor when Serenity was changing her clothes. At this time, Fallon had already regarded Hayden as a god. If she hadn't cared about Erica's emotions and feared that she would be jealous, she might have already attached herself to Hayden and done her best to seduce him. After all the performances of Hayden just now, Fallon fully believed that this man could solve the problem her business was struggling with, and they were all headed to the office to discuss what could be done. The solution given by Hayden was also very simple. On the one hand, it was to readjust the position of the exhaust port and the air intake port in the ventilation system. The most important thing was to replace all the aromatherapy materials used in the steam room, even the medicinal powder used in the medicinal baths with different herbs that were more neutral to the human body. In this way, the previous problem would never appear again. Hayden even wrote down a list of safe herbs and flowers that she could use instead of her current aromas. Fallon had no doubts about this and immediately sent someone from her staff to handle the new updates quickly. But at the same time, she also encountered another problem, and immediately frowned and said to Hayden, Mr. Hayden, where should I buy these recommended aromatherapy materials and medicinal powders? If I encounter similar problems again, I'm afraid my reputation will be ruined for good. Hayden raised his eyebrows and responded, How about this? I will contact you later and study the formula for you. I will send you the first batch of medicinal powder tomorrow morning at the latest. I have my own people in the pharmaceutical world so I can get it done. I have already prescribed some herbs for you so if you like the effect you can continue on with it." Fallon was overjoyed, saying that as long as the quality of his product was good, there was absolutely no problem with the price. Just when everyone was chatting happily, Serenity, who had put on her casual clothes, pushed open the door and walked in with a blushing face. Hayden wanted to laugh but resisted it thinking how Serenity and Erica were the same age, but their temperaments were completely different. Although Erica was a bit aloof, she had been working hard in the business field all year round, was vigorous and decisive, and was an ambitious go-getter. However, Serenity's high coldness was down to her bones, as if she were a queen, when in reality, 
she was quite an airhead. Serenity, you have seen Hayden's ability now. The two of us lost this bet, so it's time to pay up. Fallon's tone was aggrieved, but her face was full of spirits and she was very excited. Obviously, even if she lost this bet, she herself would have benefited greatly. I don't need you to remind me. Serenity responded coldly. Then she came directly to Hayden and said, I don't like to beat around the bush and I always keep my word. You did prove your miraculous medical skills just now, so I am convinced that you're not a fake. What are you going to ask me to do? Hayden didn't know how to respond for a while. Originally, he had several opinions on Serenity. But after watching her suffer, the anger in his heart had already dissipated. He didn't take the previous bet seriously at all. Now being questioned face to face by Serenity, Hayden raised his eyebrows and responded, I think I will leave that entirely to Erica. As you know, she has always hoped that you can collaborate with us to help build a new company. So how about it? Erica's face instantly brightened as she nodded approvingly. She realized that her husband knew a lot more about business than he let on. As for the salary and benefits, just negotiate with your girlfriends. Hayden chuckled. Are you mocking me on purpose? Serenity huffed irritably. Now is not the time to show off your masculinity, Mr. Hayden. I can tell you without a doubt that Serenity has never had a real relationship until now. Do you understand what I mean? Fallon, who watched the excitement, was teasing her ruthlessly once again. There were naked hints in the words. All right, guys, lay off. He's my husband, so stop behaving like hungry vultures. Erica huffed and stood in front of Hayden protectively. He only laughed in embarrassment before pulling his wife into his embrace. Hayden didn't know how to proceed with the discussion, but Serenity bit her lip begrudgingly, looked at Hayden with a defeated face, and said, Don't worry, I'll report to Erica tomorrow. I'm a little tired today, so I won't be with you. After finishing speaking, Serenity turned around and hurried away. Her legs seemed to be weak and wobbly when walking. Hayden... What did you do to her? How come she can't walk stably? Fallon joked once again. Hayden rolled his eyes because he really couldn't stand Fallon's distasteful jokes any longer. Serenity, who had already reached the door, staggered and almost fell down on the spot in embarrassment. At this time, Erica was not as jealous as before. Knowing that Hayden was not that kind of person, she only laughed along with Fallon but also held her husband's arm tightly as if telling him that she understood what he wanted. It was obvious that he had spent more than enough time in this place, so Erica quickly offered to leave. Hayden finally breathed a sigh of relief after going out the door and getting into the car. Erica suppressed a smile as she took the seat beside him, turned her face and asked in a playful tone, Have you been wronged today, Mr. Hayden? Fallon has always had this carefree personality, and she is also very righteous. Otherwise, she would not have asked Serenity to help me set up the company so casually. Hearing what Erica said, Hayden couldn't help asking, what exactly does Serenity do? Why is it necessary for her to be a part of our company? Erica gave Hayden a disappointed look and pouted, wow, this just proves that during the introduction I gave earlier, you didn't listen to a single word. Serenity is a lawyer and one of the top in the country. If I want to start a company, it will inevitably involve various legal issues for which we will need a chief counsel. Serenity is very proficient in these matters. The most important thing is that we have known each other for many years. Although we are not childhood friends or anything, our relationship has always been very good and she can really be trusted. By this time, Hayden finally realized his wife's motives and nodded approvingly. By the way, do you have a plan for the medicinal powder you promised Fallon to make? If it's difficult or you're too busy, you don't have to force yourself, Erica asked very sensibly. Hayden responded with a smile. You don't have to worry about this. I have a lot of formulas for the medicine powder here. It's not a big deal at all. 
I'll just go back and find a few old friends to get me a batch of high-quality wild medicinal materials and just roughly process them into a powder. If the response of this powder is good enough, we can even start a pharmaceutical company. I mean, only if you're out of ideas about what to do with the land we've acquired, that is. Or maybe pharma can just be a small part of your larger company. What do you think? It's just a suggestion, Hayden responded shyly. I didn't expect you to be so farsighted now. I think it's a brilliant idea, Hayden. I thought you said you knew nothing about business, but you're clearly very well versed. Erica praised happily from the side. Hayden was no less than Prince Charming in Erica's mind. His transformation was so unbelievable, and he was suddenly so full of great ideas and resources that he seemed indestructible. All right, are you going to visit the community now? I know you have been worried about it. Erica asked softly again. Hayden nodded. Greg and the others have been watching during the day, but it's calm. But I always feel that in the dead of night, that horrid poisoner will definitely surface again. He was determined to catch the poisoner in a short time and follow the clues to find the mastermind behind the scenes. It's just that he didn't want to involve Erica, so he tentatively asked if he should drop her back to the villa to rest. After all, she must have been running around for a whole day outside to get their company started. No, I want to follow you. Although the villa is high-end and luxurious, it feels deserted and awkward to live alone. Besides, I miss my old home and want to see what's happening. Erica resolutely refused. Okay, if you're still not used to it later, just bring Melanie over, and you two sisters can also be companions. That housekeeper, Sandra, is actually very dedicated, and she can add some excitement to your lives or something. Hayden chuckled in a low voice while controlling the car. Speaking of, where is Melanie? I haven't seen her in the past few days. She's gone to check on mom in the countryside, which is why it's been pretty quiet around here, Erica sighed. Back in the community, Hayden noticed that the entire area looked pretty much deserted. Originally, after he bought the land, he promised these residents that they would still be able to live in the original house for free before the official demolition of the place. So not many people had actually moved away. But now it seemed that due to the impact of the morning poisoning incident, the doors and windows of every house were closed, and only very few people could be seen outside. There were only some older people sitting downstairs drinking tea and chatting, and there were obviously a lot fewer people with lights upstairs. Mr. Hayden, Miss Erica, why are you both here in person? If you would have called me, I would have dealt with any situation here. Greg jumped off an off-road vehicle next to him and greeted him from afar. Hayden took a look and suddenly found that Greg's state was not right. He was limping when he walked, and there were obvious bruises on his face as if he had just fought with someone, and it was a tragic battle. Greg? Why do you look so beat up? What happened? Did someone come to make trouble during the day? Hayden's face suddenly became serious as he asked. No. Greg quickly turned his face to the side and denied it, obviously not intending to tell the truth. Oh, I see. You don't regard me as a friend anymore, then? Is there anything you don't want to tell me? I thought we were brothers. Hayden became more curious, so his tone became colder. A younger minion next to Greg said dejectedly, I let someone beat me up. Those guys are pretty ruthless. If Boss Greg hadn't rushed to the front, I'm afraid we'd all be crippled. A man from Donald's faction? Hayden's tone was a little more annoyed. No. It's the nightclub I have under my wing. It's been a bit uneasy recently. It seems that someone wants to grab the sight from me. It has nothing to do with the situation here, Mr. Hayden, so you don't have to worry about it. Besides, it's very common for us sons and daughters of the streets to fight and cause trouble. Greg glared at the younger brother, and then explained with a casual smile, obviously trying to hide the seriousness of the matter from Hayden. It was not convenient for Hayden to continue asking more questions, 
So he came directly in front of Greg and put his hand on his shoulder. The mystical energy in his body was transmitted instantly, directly healing the sprain on Greg's leg, and at the same time the bruises on his face also quickly disappeared. Be careful anyway. You are also a big brother who has to take care of the young men under his command. Don't fight with people all the time if you don't have to. Try to resolve things with words. If you need help, you can always come to me. Hayden patted Greg on the shoulder. Greg showed a trace of gratitude on his face, nodded, and then changed the topic. Mr. Hayden, I think your guess should be correct. The person who poisoned the community this morning will definitely come again. You and Miss Erica should wait in the house comfortably. My brothers and I are waiting here and watching. If anyone who makes trouble dares to come, I promise to take them down as soon as possible. Seeing Greg's confident smiling face, Hayden twitched the corner of his mouth, finally nodded and went upstairs with the laughing Erica. Your relationship with Greg is so adorable. You really are like brothers, she chuckled, ruffling his hair affectionately as they entered the house. Forget about him. Let's talk about our relationship, shall we? Hayden whispered as he pulled her into her arms and leaned in for a deep kiss. He picked her up and started walking upstairs. Once they entered the bedroom, Hayden couldn't hold back anymore. Erica also seemed to understand where the night was headed and cooperated very well and the two couldn't help but be full of love. After a long time, Erica had fallen asleep sweetly leaning on Hayden's shoulder, and the angelic features on her delicate face were filled with satisfaction and happiness after extreme joy. Hayden was still thinking about the situation outside, so he got up slowly and got out of bed. While getting dressed, he approached the window. It was almost midnight at this moment, and the whole neighborhood was quiet except for a few dim lights illuminating a few corners of the square in the neighborhood. Several off-road vehicles were parked at several entrances and exits of the community, and from time to time, a little bit of fire would light up. Hayden knew that it was Greg and his men. With Greg and the others guarding the area, Hayden simply sat by the balcony window, circulated the breath in his body, and actively entered his cultivation state. The iron bone snake slowly crawled out, facing the moonlight and coiled itself around Hayden's shoulder. It was almost as if the human and the snake had become one entity. He didn't know how long had passed, but Hayden, who was in the state of cultivation, suddenly heard the sound of hurried footsteps outside. He instantly opened his eyes and looked outside. Sure enough, he found that at the entrance of the community that he could see with his naked eyes, there were two sneaky figures flashing past. At the same time, Greg jumped out of the car with a few younger minions and chased after the shadowy figures all the way, cursing loudly to intimidate them. I found the target. Hayden cheered softly and stood up to intervene. But then, somehow, he felt that things seemed a little too simple. Those two guys who appeared were so bold and reckless as to walk right past the community's front door. Wasn't that too stupid? What if it was all a trick? Could it be some sort of ambush? Hayden stood quietly behind the window, carefully checking the surrounding situation as much as possible. Sure enough, after Greg and his younger minions left one after another and chased the two people out of the community, another sneaky figure came in from outside the wall of the community. First, he looked around cautiously, avoiding all the street lights and surveillance cameras with ease, and then began to approach the small garden in the square. The leader is here. Hayden showed a wicked smile on his face. Originally, he planned to jump directly from the window and catch the person who planned everything red-handed. Then, he would break his leg and get a confession directly, or throw him into the police station. However, this kind of thought only stayed on his mind for a second. Hayden took out his phone, switched it to camera mode, and began to film the scene. This phone was a new one, and it had an infrared function for taking pictures at night. Although it was not particularly clear, the physical characteristics and actions of the other party could be captured very clearly. 
Hayden was patiently waiting until the sneaky person took out the gas bombs containing the poison from the backpack behind him and started unlocking them. Even then, Hayden didn't make any moves. Unexpectedly, the iron bone snake, which was coiled on his shoulder, seemed to smell the poisonous powder and suddenly turned into a black streamer as it plunged down from the balcony. Don't kill anyone, Hayden whispered and was anxious for a while. In the blink of an eye, the person below was alarmed. He then raised his head to where Hayden was, glanced at him, and ran towards the courtyard wall to make his escape. The iron bone snake was much faster than a human, so in less than two seconds he caught up with the sneaky guy. But he didn't bite him to death, and instead only stared at him with its pair of glossy green eyes. The unlucky guy immediately felt his body go stiff, and he couldn't even maintain his breathing so he fell to the ground with a petrified expression on his face. Those guys were just tricks. Those two bastards ran too fast. Greg took a few younger minions, returned to the square, and was panting for breath. While cursing, he was suddenly surprised to find that Hayden was leaning against the off-road vehicle and smoking a cigarette, and there was a young man squatting on the ground next to him with his head in his hands, looking as if he was witnessing the end of his days. In addition, there were a few objects that looked like grenades heaped on top of his backpack. What the hell? When did this kid sneak in, Mr. Hayden? And did you catch him? Greg was so angry that he kicked the man's stomach hard. The latter let out a muffled snort but didn't dare to scream out loudly and once again landed on his face, completely disfigured from the fall. Break his legs for me, all right? Greg had already come to his senses at this time, and he was so angry that he wanted his younger minions to beat the culprit up bloody. Forget it. Let's just call the police. We should hurry up and settle this matter, so as not to delay the purchase of real estate indefinitely, Hayden said calmly while smoking a cigarette. A few minutes later, a police car roared and sped towards them. Several government officials with dignified faces quickly got out of the car, looking at Hayden, Greg, and the others, obviously a little curiously. Mr. Hayden, I'm sorry we failed you. Originally, I also arranged for some manpower on the outskirts of the community, but we were lured away by a few sneaky guys. Greg huffed a little angrily. Hayden tried his best to suppress a smile and responded, It's all right. I'm glad I stayed behind just in case something like this happened. When the leader of the police troop came to Hayden, he simply said, Officer, thank you for arriving so fast. I have the tools used for committing the crime and video evidence here, and now I will leave it to you. I hope you can arrest the mastermind behind the scenes as soon as possible and return the residents of the community to a peaceful environment. The lead officer nodded and ordered his staff to quickly take the culprit away. And it wasn't until this time that Hayden's eyes gradually became cold. Mr. Hayden, you don't really intend to rely on them, do you? Although the government handles matters fairly, the process is very complicated. Even if someone is arrested today, it may not be possible to close the case in less than three to five days. Greg asked probingly beside him. Hayden showed a slightly ferocious smile at the corner of his mouth, looked at Greg and said, before you came back just now, I already talked to the kid who was arrested. He was cooperative and told me some useful information. So tonight, we will settle this matter completely. I only sent the kid off to the cops so that no one from the enemy camp will think we are after them. So now, we will attack. Greg nodded thoughtfully. Then, shall I bring more people? Hayden shook his head. You and I are enough. Besides, it's easy to attract attention if there are too many people. Let your subordinates be smart and prevent others from causing trouble here. A moment later, Hayden left from the side door of the community in Greg's car and began to tell his friend what had happened in detail. The man who was caught just now had almost fainted after seeing the iron-boned snake. So there was no need for Hayden to torture or threaten him at all and he immediately took the initiative to inform Hayden of Donald's greater plan. Unsurprisingly, Donald spent a lot of money to hire these poisoners. Apparently, he had used such methods a lot in the past. 
and right now he was having a good time in a villa in Wyvern City. Hayden's plan was very simple. That is to go straight to the place and deal with Donald directly. He would make sure that no one was killed, but he definitely had some special designs in mind for Donald. Hayden planned to leave him with an indelible tragedy and a lifetime's experience of unadulterated pain. The car stopped about a hundred meters outside the villa. Hayden got out of the car with a serious expression followed by Greg. In the villa, Donald was lying on his back on the sofa. He was a little tired after enjoying the services of a few beauties. He had no idea what was coming for him. Why hasn't that kid called me with an update yet? Has he completed the task yet or not? Donald grumbled irritably as he shuffled in his seat. Guess I'll have to find out for myself. He huffed and finally grabbed the phone on the table. After quickly dialing a string of numbers with his sausage fingers, Donald turned on the speakerphone and waited for his minion to pick up the call. However, there was only a beeping sound on the phone. How dare this little twerp not answer my call? He cursed viciously, his face becoming more and more ugly by the second. At this time, he suddenly heard some strange thudding noises in the yard. It sounded vaguely like someone had hit a wall and fallen to the ground. Donald's heart immediately tightened, and he quickly said to the woman next to him, Quick, go to the window to see what's going on. He picked up his walkie-talkie to investigate and ask the bodyguards around the house about the specific situation. The half-naked, glamorous woman turned her head from the window and said, Mr. Dixon, it seems that someone has broken in. What? How many people are there? Donald's forehead was sweating, especially when no one responded no matter how much he called on his walkie-talkie. The glamorous woman replied, It seems there are only two? What? Two? Are you kidding me? I have more than a dozen subordinates outside, so we have no reason to panic. Donald breathed a sigh of relief. Ever since he was pummeled to the ground by Hayden, Donald had learned his lesson the hard way. No matter where he would go out, he would always bring at least a dozen bodyguards and thugs with him. In the past two days, he had been simply huddled in this villa, strategizing and arranging the framework for his revenge because he knew better than to deal with Hayden himself. At first, he was a little flustered when he heard that someone had broken in. But after learning that there were only two people on the other side, he didn't take it seriously at all. No, Mr. Dixon, let's run. Those two people, especially the one in the lead, look very fierce. The glamorous woman panicked, watching the situation in the yard and reporting from time to time as she hurriedly put on her clothes. Fierce. Donald shuddered again inexplicably. As soon as he climbed into his wheelchair with the help of the woman, the door of the room was kicked open with a bang. The first person to walk in was Greg, who was sweating and slightly out of breath. Greg's eyes were menacing and fierce, and he was holding a metal bat with bloodstains on it. It's you? Donald immediately recognized Greg and subconsciously looked towards the door. Just then, Hayden walked in with a gloomy expression. Although the clothes on his body were very simple, there were no creases nor any blood stains or signs of damage on them. He was breathing as usual, and there was nothing special about him except that his eyes, which were like knives. Donald widened his eyes and prepared to kneel down from the wheelchair. He did know how fierce Hayden was with his hands, after all. Now that Greg and Hayden were able to walk into the room without anyone blocking them, it meant that the dozens of bodyguards and thugs that Donald had hired had all proved to be useless. The glamorous woman screamed and immediately shrank into the corner of the wall, not daring to lift her head. Greg shook the baseball bat in his hand and aimed to hit Donald directly on the forehead. The latter's trembling became more and more obvious, but he gritted his teeth reluctantly and said, I have surveillance cameras installed here, so if you dare to beat me today, I will have my lawyer sue you. Hayden, don't think that you can be lawless and do whatever you want in a few strokes. Do you know how powerful the group behind me is? Not just Wyvern City, the Golden Dragon group is famous in the whole country. Facing Donald's feeble threats, Greg just turned his face and looked at Hayden with searching eyes, wanting to know what his orders were. Hayden looked nonchalant, lowered his head, took out a cigarette and lit it. Greg immediately showed a wicked smile on his face and then raised the bat in his hand high, as if to strike any moment. Greg, who was renowned as a street gangster, knew where the most vulnerable bones in the human body were, and he also knew where to hit people and cause pain, but not cause serious injury or death. In short, he was well-versed in the language of torture. 
With a smirk, the tall Greg swung down with immense force and rammed the bat into the wheelchair-bound man's skull. Donald probably never suffered such a severe beating in his life. His screams were louder than a pig in a slaughterhouse, but he just couldn't pass out. He was pathetically dragging his broken leg on the ground, rolling around aimlessly. You act so tough, but get your minions to do your dirty work. Pathetic. And then you hurt so many innocent people by resorting to such sick methods? If Mr. Hayden gave me the order, I would bash your skull in and crack it for good. Your subordinates have already been arrested by the cops, thanks so, my idol. In fact, I'm sure that kid's already confessed you're the real culprit, so sure, Donald. Call the cops by all means. Let's see what happens, shall we? Greg said with a sinister smile. Donald was about to faint as soon as he heard this. Immediately, his eyes darkened, but Hayden quickly walked over, raised his leg, and kicked him on the waist. He promptly passed out after that, but something crazy happened after. Following the kick, Donald seemed to have been given a shot in the arm, which caused his whole body to tense up immediately. His eyes widened and he regained a clear consciousness again. However, the pain in his body continued to magnify, and it felt like a big hammer was constantly breaking every bone in his body. Stop it. I admit that I'm cowardly. But don't take the law into your hands. It's not good for anyone to kill someone. Donald lost all face at this moment and kept begging for mercy. He could sense that there was a murderous intent in Hayden's cold eyes. If he really couldn't plead and grovel effectively at the moment, Hayden might let Greg beat him to death. Go back and tell your behind-the-scenes boss that the landowner in that neighborhood is named Hayden, and he should stop trying to get in the way of my fairly progressing business deals. Otherwise, his end may be worse than yours, understand? Hayden flicked the cigarette's ash with a cold expression on his face. Donald endured the pain, nodded again and again, and said tearfully, I see, I will definitely convey these exact words. Hayden didn't believe that Donald would really cooperate honestly. Before coming here, he genuinely thought about killing him. But then, just for such a guy, it was not worth going against the law. So at this time, Hayden has thought of a good way to get rid of him once and for all without getting himself into trouble. Hayden shook his arm lightly, and a black shadow sprang out like a ghost. Then it landed directly in front of Donald. Donald has also seen the Iron Bone Snake and knew how awesomely evil this snake was. At this time, he was so scared that he almost wet himself on the spot. Hayden, I promise I will do what you say, but please get rid of this thing quickly. If I die here, you will be implicated no matter what. Donald used his hands and feet together, thumping like an elephant, just hoping that the Iron Bone Snake would stay away from him. Seeing the other party's reaction, Hayden only felt disgust and contempt. Then he said coldly, My Iron Bone Snake has special powers. As long as it has seen your face and smelled your breath, it can easily find you no matter where you hide in the ends of the earth. If you are still found in Wyvern City before dawn tomorrow, I guarantee that he will bite you to death as soon as possible, and by that time no organization of yours will find me. Hayden gave Donald a cold smile and he took a step towards him, making the other scream in horror. Donald listened to Hayden's words, and in the end his face was ashen. A few minutes later, Hayden led Greg and swaggered out from the main entrance of the villa. It wasn't until this time that the bodyguards and thugs who were lying on the ground managed to somehow stumble up again. Mr. Hayden, your trick today was really clever. That bastard Donald will not dare to stay here no matter what now, and I'm sure he must be looking forward to leaving this town on a rocket. Greg chatted about what happened just now with great interest, smiling brightly. Hayden still had a calm expression on his face. Sure, we took down one Donald, but I'm sure there will definitely be others coming. But at least in the recent period, it should be quieter. This will let Erica take care of the real estate business in peace. It doesn't matter who comes anyway. I'm following you. You are my elder brother, after all. I'll do whatever you want me to do, Greg said confidently. Hayden smiled and didn't object. The next morning, just as he had expected, Donald prepared to run away at the fastest speed, the police had already obtained information from the arrested culprit earlier and issued a warrant for Donald's arrest as well. As for whether he would be caught, Hayden didn't care anymore, as long as he left Wyvern City for good. Because no matter where Donald will go, whenever he would think of the name Hayden, he would feel fear and maybe even faint. Due to the quick handling of the matter and the final result, the real estate acquisition could be carried on smoothly from now on. Hayden came to the clinic in advance, took a lot of medicinal materials from the shelf by himself, and started to tinker with them. 
He still remembered that he had promised Fallon Harvey that he would help prepare some medicinal powders that could strengthen the body, relax the tendons, activate the collaterals, and even change the texture of the skin for her spa. He was also excited to experiment with this product because it might open up a lot of new possibilities for him. According to the unique techniques and formulae passed down from the blood of his ancestors, Hayden quickly prepared the medicinal powder. After brewing it with hot water, the properties and effects of the medicine made him feel at ease and satisfied. He was happy with the results and planned to mass-produce this product if Fallon liked it too. In fact, there were other business owners who would also love to have access to his latest invention. Hayden had already figured things out and decided to call Seymour directly for medicinal materials, knowing that there would be no problem. As for the manpower, he would have to figure out a way. Perhaps he would temporarily employ Greg's men for a test run. After all, the real estate acquisition would come to an end today, and Greg's men usually had nothing to do except watch the scene. It was absolutely possible for him to call up his younger minions or recruit workers temporarily. Besides, Hayden only needed to go through a simple training process and then find a factory or warehouse to manufacture the powder. In this way, it would not only ensure that the formula will not be leaked out, but on the other hand, as long as these medicinal powders had a good market, they would even be able to open up a small pharma company like Hayden had suggested to Erica earlier, which would bring immense fame and fortune. Hayden knew that he couldn't stay in this small clinic forever, nor could he just stay in this small city forever. After solving the matter of the Lovelace family, he still wanted to travel in a wider world and expand his reach. After Hayden cleaned up the medicinal powder and medicinal materials on the table, he ran to the back to call Seymour and then Greg. When he came back, he was dumbfounded, because he found that the rich heiress, Juliet, was sitting on his chair like a queen with a small tub in front of her, and she had soaked her delicate feet and soles in it at the moment. Her face was flushed, her eyes were a little hazy, and she seemed like she was full of spring. Damn, who told you to use my product to soak your feet in? Hayden roared, and then directly pulled Juliet up from the chair to get her feet out of the brew. What are you doing? I was just testing out your new product. Besides, what's the big deal? It's just a spa bath bomb type of thing, isn't it? I'll pay for it, so stop being so weird about it. Juliet blushed, and she was a little annoyed at being rudely pulled off the chair by Hayden at this moment. However, her temper was completely different from the usual arrogant and domineering demeanor earlier. The words she spoke at this time were soft and coquettish, which even seemed a bit flirtatious. Hayden's face became more and more uncomfortable, so he simply pushed Juliet onto the other chair beside him and said angrily, Sometimes I really wonder if your brain is filled with toothpaste. Did you just use the medicine to soak your feet casually? You don't even think about what this thing is used for specifically? It has a special use, you fool. Well, what is it for? I feel weird when you mention it. Why is my body so hot from the inside out? I really feel like I'm full of steam that I need to blow. Juliet suddenly covered her mouth after she finished speaking, realizing how she sounded. Then she hugged her chest subconsciously, looked at Hayden with infinite contempt and said, I never thought you would look so dignified on working days, but you are so dirty behind your back. Does this thing of yours have the ingredients of some aphrodisiac? No wonder you came so early today and secretly prepared medicine powder by yourself. Is it because your body is weak, so you plan to use this to please women? I despise you so much. Hayden was so angry that he wished he could shoot Juliet at the moment. But seeing the other party in such an embarrassing state, he decided the best revenge would be to give up the idea of detoxifying her. He took two steps back and said coldly, This thing does have a good effect on men. But if it is used on young women with special physiques, the effect will be more obvious. You don't have to care about whether I can please women or not. I think you should be more concerned now about how to remove the effect of the medicine. Juliet also panicked and could feel an irrepressible desire in her heart, and it was infinitely magnified every minute and every second. Scratching her ears and cheeks, she said out of breath, Can't you think of some way to get rid of it? Please help me. Tell me how to remove the effects of the medicine, because if this continues, I will make a fool of myself. Hayden had a mocking look on his face. Now you decide it's time to admit your mistake. You young ladies from rich families are really arrogant and brainless. You act high and mighty but always need us common folk to help you out. Juliet was about to cry, and while suppressing the desire in her heart, she twisted her body and said, I am still a pure and innocent girl. You better speak to me like you would to a lady. Although I think your medical skills are very good and you are very good at fighting, it is not possible for us to be together, so drop all those crazy thoughts now. Juliet was obviously picking up the wrong signals, which annoyed him even more. 
She was so vain that she thought every man only wanted her. Hayden said angrily, Juliet, you think too much of yourself. I'm not interested in you at all. Don't you dare act so high and mighty or else find some creep on the street to help you. I'm sure he will happily oblige, since you're every man's dream girl, as you say. Juliet was embarrassed, but she also knew that no one except Hayden could save her at this time. So she changed from being unruly and willful to docile. She dared not to lose her temper and begged pitifully for mercy instead. Hayden sighed, approached her, and put his fingers together to make a griffin claw shape. The mystical energy in his body began to circulate rapidly. The fingers in the form of a griffin claw constantly tapped Juliet's head to speed up blood circulation and promote sweat discharge. Suddenly, Juliet's face became even redder and she had a hungry look in her eyes that truly frightened Hayden. She looked like she would pounce on him at any moment. In the blink of an eye, Juliet was already dripping with sweat, and at the same time, because of the accelerated blood circulation, she couldn't help panting, as if she had run a mile. Then she jumped off the chair with twinkling eyes, threw himself into Hayden's arms, and refused to leave without saying anything, much to his horror. What are you two doing? It's broad daylight. Brittany's voice reverberated from the front door. Although Hayden didn't do anything wrong, he threw Juliet back on the chair with some guilt on his face, completely disregarding any gentlemanly demeanor. When Juliet was about to pounce on him again, Hayden quickly walked around behind the chair and then said to Brittany, who looked suspicious and contemptuous, Go get a basin of cold water, run. Although Brittany was puzzled, after spending time with Hayden, she already had a certain understanding of his character. So seeing his serious expression and Juliet's suspicious state, she couldn't waste time wondering too much and hurried to get a basin of cold water. Hayden secretly heaved a sigh of relief, pressed Juliet's shoulders from behind the chair so she would be unable to get up and at the same time circulated the mystical energy in his body to help her release the effect of the medicine. By the time Brittany hurriedly brought a basin of cold water over, Juliet's symptoms had been significantly relieved, but her face was still terribly red. Splash cold water on her face. When will she wake up completely is when she will stop acting crazy. Hayden wiped the cold sweat from his forehead. After giving Brittany an order, he went to clean up the mess as soon as possible and disposed of the medicine powder on the table and the brew in the tub. Brittany didn't dare to be negligent, and while apologizing to Juliet, she kept splashing cold water from the basin onto Juliet's face with both hands. In the beginning, Juliet still dodged a little and kept screaming, but soon found that after the cold water was poured on her face, the remaining hotness and desire in her heart had almost been relieved. In the end, she simply buried her face in the basin, and then it seemed as if her whole person had finally woken up. After Brittany ultimately found out the ins and outs of the matter, she clutched his stomach and squatted on the ground, laughing so hard that she couldn't straighten up. Juliet said with a bitter face, Brittany, don't laugh at me. I was a victim here. It's Hayden's fault entirely. He doesn't study how to treat people when he is free and spends his time tinkering with such evil and suspicious medicines. Isn't this very creepy? Hayden kept a straight face and was too irritated to defend himself, so he just said coldly, Drink more water today and try to get rid of the rest of the toxins as soon as possible. You must hydrate non-stop until you flush everything out of your system. Juliet wailed in annoyance but did not dare to disobey him and hurriedly called her driver over to bring iced water. Brittany approached Hayden and asked in a low voice, Is your medicine so effective? Is there no way to completely eliminate its effects even with your ability? Drinking water to detoxify sounds a bit unbelievable. Hayden responded with a suppressed smile. Actually, the toxin has been removed and the discomfort she feels is just a psychological effect. Today's incident should teach her a lesson, otherwise she will be reckless and harm others in the future. Brittany nodded with a look of instant understanding. It didn't take long for Greg to call and inform Hayden that the factory and warehouse had been found, and he was now recruiting people. He told Hayden that if all went well, they could start working from tomorrow. Hayden was delighted when got the address and then sent it to Seymour, asking the other party to prepare medicinal materials and buy simple processing tools for him. After finishing all this business, Hayden felt a lot more relaxed, and then started the day's consultation step by step. At first, Hayden thought that Juliet, who kept drinking water, would blame him and refuse to continue studying medicine. But she once again surprised Hayden. Although this young lady had to go to the bathroom in a hurry every less than half an hour, she spent the rest of the time seriously staying by Hayden's side to watch him treat people and learn some new skills. She would even be helpful at times, pricing she really was a qualified intern. 
Due to Hayden's miraculous medical gifts and Brittany's good management skills, the business of the medical center in the whole street has been robbed by this clinic alone. Other colleagues could only stand guard at their doors in envy. Even if they hated Hayden and Brittany's small clinic, they didn't dare to make trouble because they had seen what the chief physician was capable of. After all, someone had already spread the word that Hayden's small clinic not only had the support of big local hotshots, but even Jacob Long called Hayden his brother. After a whole day, even Hayden, who was protected by the mystical energy, was unavoidably a little tired at this time. After all, except for his lunch break, the rest of the time he spent was solely on the process of rapid diagnosis and treatment prescriptions for his endless line of patients. However, even though he was a little tired, Hayden was still very happy. After all, the breath in his body was constantly being consumed, and during every recovery process, his cultivation could improve by leaps and bounds. Hayden, I drank water for a whole day and now I feel sick and nauseous. Can I please go home now? Seeing that Hayden had packed up his things and was about to leave work, Juliet immediately asked with a wrinkled face. Hayden tried his best to hold back his laughter and put on a dignified look. The medicine should be almost gone from your body now. But you must remember in the future, before you have absolute certainty and confidence in medicine, you must never experiment and try it casually. Otherwise, it is very likely that you will regret it for life. After finishing speaking, he ignored Juliet and slipped out of the door as fast as he could and then got into the car. Brittany couldn't hold it in anymore and burst into laughter. When Juliet gave her a questioning look, she confessed in between laughs, Juliet, he played you. He was messing with you about the water. Instantly, the rich heiress's eyes went wide with horror. Oh my God, the poison has been removed long ago, right? That jerk deliberately made me suffer from ice water for a whole day just to teach me a lesson. Hayden, I despise you. She shrieked in fury. Juliet was smart and finally came back to her senses at this time and couldn't help cursing angrily. But at this time, Hayden had already stepped on the accelerator and left the premises. He had already made an appointment with Erica and had booked a table at a restaurant to have a quiet date night with her. But first, he would have to take time to visit the warehouse. It was going to be another busy night. On the way, Hayden drove to the warehouse first. After arriving at the location, he realized that the place was more ideal than he had imagined. Not only was the place big enough and quiet enough, but besides the equipment, everything else was also in order, which greatly pleased him. Several of Greg's younger brothers guarded the area, and the warehouse was already full of high-quality wild medicinal materials which were sent by Seymour during the day. Hayden was checking the medicinal materials when there was a sudden sound of slamming brakes coming from the door. He immediately tensed up assuming it was intruders or one of his countless enemies who wanted revenge. Aiden instantly took on a fighting pose and kept his eyes glued to the door, but then sighed deeply when he saw that the car outside was a very familiar one. Greg ran into the warehouse seconds later with an excited look on his face, took Hayden's hand, went to a quiet corner and whispered, Mr. Hayden, guess what? I've brought you some big news today. Seeing the expression on Greg's face and listening to his tone of voice, Aiden seemed to sense something. His heart immediately thumped violently in his chest. However, he still maintained a calm expression, raised his eyebrows and said, How big is the news? Greg happily handed Hayden a cigarette and said while lighting it up, The manager of the club we went to that day called. He has some news about the Lovelace family. 